12. Assuming the schematics below represent galvanic cells as written, identify the half cell reactions occurring in each. And then we have this cell schematic here. So we have Mg solid, Mg2 plus aqueous, and then we have copper 2 plus aqueous, which will give us copper solid. Now, in this case, we just have to take this schematic, which is kind of like a chemical drawing, per se, or like a chemical map, and we just have to identify the half cells. So, first things first, is that these represent galvanic cells. Just as a side note, galvanic cells mean that we're undergoing something spontaneous. So, no extra additional energy needed to make this schematic or this equation run. Now, in general, schematics will look like this, and let's just give the, the generalities of it, which is here. So now notice how they look very similar, right? I have one bracket between these two. I have one bracket between these two. I have one bracket between these two and over here, and a double bracket right in the middle. Now just know, that the way that these are represented is that the first one is always going to be the anode, aka the one that's undergoing oxidation. You could remember this by thinking of anox. So anode, oxidation always happens at the anode. And remember, oxidation means that you lost electrons, right? Whenever you lose electrons, you're becoming more positive. And that's what this little schematic is showing you. You went from a zero to a plus charge. You became more positive. On the flip side, with this one, this is the cathode, and that represents reduction. You could remember this by saying cat red, or better off, red cat. So you have anox and red cat. And reduction, remember, means that you gain electrons, so you become more negative. You go from positive down to lower values. So now here we just have to identify the half reactions. So let's write them. Seems like magnesium will turn into Mg2+, just like this would go into this. And then on the flip side, this would go into this, right, in a, in a general drawing, but in specifics, Cu2 plus will turn into Cu solid. So let's just write out the two half reactions. So we have Mg solid. So we have Mg solid, which will yield Mg2 plus. And that's aqueous. And then let's do the second one. We have copper 2, so copper two plus. That's aqueous, and this will turn into copper solid. Okay. Now, in order to make these reactions work, we just have to add the electrons. Remember, you always add electrons to the more positive side. If this magnesium was a zero charge, and this magnesium was a plus two, plus two is higher than zero. So I would add electrons on the product side, and you add as many as you need to go from the higher number to the lower number. So if you think on a number line, plus two to zero, I need two electrons. Let's do it on the flip side here. I have Cu2 plus, so this has to be a plus two, or a two plus, it doesn't really matter where you put the plus. And then copper, since there was no charge in the upper right-hand corner, that's a zero and you went from a plus two to a zero, but you always add electrons to the more positive side. That's on this side. How many electrons? Two. Takes two values to go from a two down to a zero. And these are your half cell reactions. Remember that these, these, <laughs> this is oxidation, right? So maybe I'll put that there. So we have oxidation and we have reduction. So maybe I'll just bring this over a little bit. So 
So we have the reduction half reaction, we got the oxidation half reaction, and there's a couple other things that we can say about this. If we wanted to know what the oxidizing agent is, just know that the oxidizing agent is the one that's undergoing reduction. So anytime that they're talking about agents, it's always the flip word. So the oxidizing agent is always the one that is undergoing reduction versus the reducing agent is always the one that is undergoing oxidation. But if you want to talk about it in terms of oxidant and reductant, they have the same words as what they're doing. So oxidant is undergoing oxidation. Reducing agent does the same thing. And just know that your reducing agent and your oxidizing agent or your oxidant and your reductant are only the uh, reactants. Your products are never going to be your oxidizing agents or your reducing agents. So if we want to say that, you know, what was our oxidant or what was our reducing agent, it would be the one that's undergoing oxidation. So it would be MN or actually MG solid. And then your reductant, aka your oxidizing agent would be the Cu plus. So that answers that if that comes up on a quiz or test. And then last but not least, what we should do is just make this into one equation. Now, whenever you want to make this into one equation, we just add it together. But remember, those electrons have to be the same. But thank goodness, two electrons here, two electrons here, they're already the same. So we can just add these right on up. So this will cancel, and this will cancel once we add. And now anything that's on the left stays on the left. Anything on the right stays on the right. So we have Mg solid plus your Cu2 plus aqueous. And this will go to your Mg2 plus aqueous plus your Cu solid. And that is basically everything that they could ask you for. So here are your half cells. Here is your full equation. So maybe we should just box that off just, just if you want to, right? Um, but the half cells are going to be the individual oxidation and reduction reactions with the electrons. All right. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, let me know if this helped you out. Love helping you guys out and, uh, leave a comment. Love talking to you guys. And I will be talking to you in later lessons. Have a great day. Bye-bye.